Grab your fucking king cakes, shove them down your throat, and take your tops off. Welcome to our special episode of Beware the Board, a horror podcast where we watch a randomly selected horror movie every week. I'm Bob. And I'm Ben. And we're doing a Mardi Gras special, Benjamin. Woo! Well, now you gotta take your top off and I'll throw you some beats. We have beats? Uh, no, I don't have any beats in uh, here. Well, then, it can't, <laughs> sorry, yeah, the you know show. what? Top's gotta stay Them's on. That's the rules. <laughs> like Jordan Von Strangle. Oh my god. Do you you just unearthed a memory I forgot I had. Evan and I were sitting at work. This is I've already derailed the podcast. We've already begun. Ben, what what are we doing today before I tell you the Jorgen Von Strangle story? We're watching a movie for Mardi Gras to celebrate Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, me me and me and him are sitting at work and he is on like a fairly odd parents kick. He's on the wiki, he's deep in there. I feel that. We were reading the rules. The rules. The rules. Like the rules from the fairy. I know. Some of the rules in the fairly odd parents are fucking inane. Yeah. Like, oh my god, they're crazy. Also they'd use it as a tool for episodes sometimes where it's like, ah, you can't do that. Yeah. Uh Juan Dissimo. <gasps> fantastic. Juan Dissimo. One fantastic character. Anyway, back to the fucking premise of this podcast. We're not watching a randomly selected film this week. Well, it's random to me. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Uh, what are we watching, Benjamin? Uh, we're watching Hatchet. Okay. Now, I've heard of this. We've talked about it briefly on the show before. Yeah. What is Hatchet? If you want to give a brief little like snippet of what we're about to get ourselves into. It's a slasher film. Okay, I was hoping for a little more than that, Benjamin. Well, I know, but I have notes that I was going to go through, so like, we'll do the brief little we'll description do, yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah. So Hatchet is like, uh, I think you described it as what, like, Grindhouse? Yeah. Yeah, Grindhouse light. I got, I got notes. Well, I'll I'm talk about it in my notes. I'm, I'm trying to, you I know, know. But I wrote this down. <laughs> so I want to use my, I spent time and effort. Are you doing anything for Mardi Gras? I, we don't live in Louisiana, no. so I don't know why, or, or New Orleans or anywhere near there. So no. and that's like where the big parties are. I'd get a king cake. I don't I'd eat a whole king cake by myself. I don't eat, yeah. And actually, speaking of king cakes, I didn't know what they were until recently because we were at work. Bob. Oh, because I pointed one. <laughs> no, Kyle did. Did Kyle? Yeah, because he was born in Louisiana. Oh. He was like, oh, there's king cakes from Mardi Gras. And I went, what the fuck is that? And he explained it to me. Yeah. we. Sh- I saw so many king cakes come through our place of work. They're fun. They're just like everywhere. Boxes on boxes of them. If you choke on the baby, you get to buy the one next year. What? They bake a little baby. I think it's a baby Jesus. Into, into the cake. And if you get the slice with the baby in it, you get to buy the cake next year. That sucks. You choke and then they make you buy a new cake? Well, no. Theoretically, you're not supposed to choke on the baby. But it's in the cake. Well, yeah, but like when you're eating it, it falls out. Mardi it's a piece of, sounds dangerous. It's a piece of baby in there. What they they also put like beads and shit on it. You've well, never looked at a king cake. No, it's, I've never looked at a king cake. It's like bread decorated with icing, and then they're like, what do we got in like the dollar section of the store? Uh, some plastic coins and some beads. Oh, my God. That's probably really offensive to some Marty those, bar growers. Those sparkles that are, like, just hard sugar and they're hard to chew. Those suck. I, you know how I feel about sprinkles in general. We've had this conversation. I'm not doing some Hundreds podcast. Hundreds and thousands? Huh? You, you don't like hundreds and thousands? Hundreds and thousands of what? Hundreds and thousands. Th- that doesn't answer my question. You just said you don't like hundreds and thousands. I didn't. I said, is that what you call sprinkles? Why do you call you them hundreds that? and thousands? Oh, this is a bit. No, I'm not doing this with you. I'm not baiting myself into a bit. <laughs> it's okay. Our foreign audience will get it. Our foreign audience? Was that the British thing? Uh, I think and Australia. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes more sense. I was very, very confused. I did not know what the fuck you were talking about. <sighs> we don't have a foreign audience. We might. That's a secret. <laughs> it's not that big of a secret when you say it. <laughs> Shh. You know what? I'll cut that out. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, anything new with you this week, Ben? Anything interesting? No. No, nothing. Nothing at all. Nope. You sound tired. We we just got Mexican food. The Mexican food we got was really good. Yeah, it was really good. Let's review it. <laughs> Let's review. <laughs> we'll be the superior version of a food podcast. You know what? You're <laughs> fucking right. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much disdain. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, Bob does a food podcast on the side. <laughs> I do it with one of my one of my best friends, and he's an absolute fucking ape. <laughs> like I love him to death, but oh my god! All right, well, 
Are you ready for some hatchety stuff? Yeah, I'm excited because, you know, we watched My Bloody Valentine for Valentine's Day. Yeah. Another slasher movie. I'm big. I'm big. I'm a big fan. You know, I like Michael. He's the only one I've really seen. My E. But, you know, we'll yeah. see. Hey, he's probably the only one you've seen. Yeah. So it's kind of weird that we're going in with um, this. Hatchet before we get of, to other things. Instead of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street or like Jason yeah, or um, Chucky. This film is probably more fun if you have a basis in horror movies, at least the more common ones. I've seen some stuff. Bob does not have the basis, though, for this film. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see how much he likes it. All right. So it's a 2006 film. Okay. All right. That's Actually, that's older than I thought. All right. You honestly. ready for the description? Yeah. Prepare yourself to meet New Orleans' own version of Jason Voorhees. See, now this sounds like fun. This sounds like a good, a good classic Bayou slasher. But you have no reference for Jason Voorhees. <laughs> well, no, I've seen. I think it's part six, Friday the Thirteenth, part six. I don't, no, I thought it was the remake. Maybe it's the remake. I think it's the remake. Maybe which you fucking suck. But listen, man, that wasn't by choice. You think I was going around trying to watch this shit as a kid? No, yeah. it just happened to come on, and I watched like, it. I'm gonna go watch the new Jason remake. That's like no, not at all. Actually, is that eleven or twelve? Might be twelve. I have no idea. You played the video game. I haven't played the video game, but I've seen people oh. play the video game. I wanted to play um, the game when it came out, but I just got over to it. One hour thirty three minutes. Bog standard. It's rated R. Thank Christ. IMDb. Yep. Five point six. All right. Tomato meter fifty five. Okay. Audience score forty five. God damn it. Kind of middle of the road. <laughs> it's so middle, but I'm excited. All right. It has six awards and one nomination. Okay. A 2006 Austin Fantastic Fest Audience Award to Kane Hodder for Best Actor. Okay. 2006 Austin Fantastic Fest Audience Award to Adam Green for Best Picture. 2006 Austin Fantastic Fest Audience Award for Best Special Effects. God damn. A 2006 Austin Fantastic Fest Jury Prize to Kane Hodder for Best Actor. A 2006 Austin Fantastic Fest Jury Prize to John Carl Buechler for Best Special Effects. And a 2007 Fantasia Film Festival Award to Adam Green for Best European slash North and South American Film. Okay. It won a bunch of awards at one fe- two two festivals. Yeah. That's cool. I, I feel like when fe- movies do well at festivals, I usually like them. Yeah, but only one or two festivals, you know. But I mean, that's better than nothing. But yeah. All right. So I'm doing something a little bit different today. Mm-hmm. For like noteworthy actors, right? Okay. I'm gonna give you like the standard list of people to look out for, right? Yeah. And then I'm gonna res- reserve some names because oh. these are just people you should be able to recognize and go, oh, oh, there's some like really, really famous people in this movie. Yes, that's awesome. And I'll tell you who they are afterwards, and we'll see if you caught them. Okay. But all right, that'll be after the movie. So awesome. People to look out for in this film: Joel David Moore as Ben. <laughs> I'm in this, film. in this movie, yeah. Uh, he also plays Norm Spellman in Avatar. You know Norm Spellman? Norm Spellman? Is that someone's Spellman. N- Sm- oh, I thought his name was Norm Spellman. <laughs> and I was like, that's ah, a- I'm a Spellman. <laughs> I was like, James Cameron put that in Avatar? No, he's um he's one of the, the scientist guys. I've he's never seen Avatar. probably one of the main scientists. I've never guys. seen Avatar. Oh, well. <laughs> never seen it. You'll, you'll recognize his face. Oh, really? He's been in a couple things. Okay. Uh, I think he's also on Bones. Oh, I didn't watch a lot of Bones, but my dad did, so I caught a lot of episodes okay. in passing. He's one of the, what are they called? The Squinterns. Oh! <laughs> the the really oh emo one. Oh, my God. Oh, you remember that... the emo one? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, him. my God. That's incredible. <laughs> the one, that's the one, I don't know if you ever saw the episode, but him and, um, oh, my God, the guy who was really into bugs. Okay. Do you know okay. who talking Yeah, about? I know who you're talking about. And, um... Zach, mm-hmm. they're really into Avatar in one episode. Oh, my God. Because it's like this big thing, and they all go to see it. That's really funny. I think solely because that actor is in it. Is in it That's as, like, a main character. Phenomenal. All right. Uh, Dion Richmond as Marcus. Okay. Uh, he also appears as Tyson Fox in Scream 3. Ah, see? I haven't watched Scream either. I know. When we get to Scream, we'll yeah. watch it. This is Scream 3. <laughs> it's pretty not want to watch. Okay, I was about to say. The first three Screams... It's the original OG th- Scream trilogy. All right. Scream 4? All right. Scream 5? Meh. We haven't seen Scream 6. It's not out yet. <laughs> I don't like Scream 5. I know. Uh, Tamara Feldman as Mary Beth. Okay. Uh, she also appears as Poppy Lifton from Gossip Girl. I see. I haven't seen Gossip Girl, but, you know, we've talked know. about it. <laughs> yep. Uh, Mercedes McNabb as Misty. Uh, she's Harmony Kendall from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. 
and Angel. Oh. She appeared on both shows. Okay. I watched a lot of Angel as a kid, and I should not have. She's the blonde chick. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, Perry Shen is Sean. Uh, he also appears on, as Brad Cooper from General Hospital. So if we have any fans of daytime television. No, my mom, not me. Okay, this man, he's been on, I, I, I didn't write down the numbers, but it's like 360-something episodes. My mom loves General of Hospital. Of General Hospital, so she probably knows my mom would. Brad Cooper. She would also, know. did you know General Hospital's been on since 1963? Yes. My mom is a huge fan. She's been watching right. it since she was a kid, dude. And wow. she still watches it every fucking day. <laughs> That's why that show is still running, is because people like that. Yeah. But yeah, he's he's been on there since 2013. Holy shit. Still going. It's a good way to have it made as an actor. Yeah, just... Probably doesn't pay a lot, but like it's a... It's a solid gig. gig. Richard Ryle as Jim Promatio. Very famously, he is Tom Smikowski in Office Space. I haven't seen that. Have you ever seen Office Space? Mm-mm. You'll recognize his face. He, he, he plays like a kind of character actor in a lot of stuff. Okay. But he's like he's just in office. Okay, place. I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll recognize him. Patricia Darbo as Shannon Permatio. Uh, she plays Nancy Wesley from Days of Our Lives. My mom loves Days of Our Lives too. <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's two people who are on daytime television. My on mom this. is such a Days of Our Lives fan. Uh, it's insane. She was on Days of Our Lives from 1998 to 2022. Holy crap! Yeah, she's still in it. Like, is she uh, still running or is she? Old? I I think she's off of it now. Okay, because 22, not 20. Oh, yeah, I forget that it's a new year. Um, That one's also been on since 1965. Dude, those are the two shows my mom would watch every single day when I was a kid. She watched General Hospital. She watched Days of Our Lives. Those are the things she watched. But, yeah, she was on a lot, a lot, a lot. I can imagine. Like, a lot. (laughs) All right. Joshua Leonard as Ainsley. Uh, He also appears as Joshua Josh uh, Leonard in The Blair Witch Project. Oh. He's one of the, the, the big characters in that. I don't know if I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, when we watch that, I might like have to decompress that. Like, I don't think it's that bad. People, really? Some people think it's really scary. I've heard. I it's watched it. I'm like, really it's fucking boring scary. Sometimes. Really? I like it, but it's just like <sighs> kind of a slog. Yeah. There's some good stuff about it. It's bad. John Carl Buchler as Jack Cracker. Jack Cracker. That's a fucking killer name. Yeah. It's good. And Cracker Jack. Yeah, but the other way around. He works on the makeup department. Like that's that's he's a special effects guy. Okay. He's the one who wore. Uh, one like special effect awards. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Uh, for things he's worked on, because I thought that'd be interesting. Oh, this is interesting. Actually, he did makeup department, specifically additional makeup effects, mechanical makeup, and imageries on Reanimator. I haven't seen. That. I love Reanimator. I've heard that. He also did special effects and specifically special makeup effects unit on Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven: The New Blood. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right, and then the last one we're going to mention for now. We're going to save the rest for after the movie. Is Riley Vanderbilt as young Victor Crowley? She also played Shannon in Frozen. I never saw Frozen. Not not the animated Frozen. Oh, Frozen the horror movie. Oh, there's a horror movie called Frozen. Yeah. That's cool. And Wonder Woman from the Wonder Woman short. Huh. Okay. It was like a web short for Wonder Woman in 2013. Okay. All right. So writer director, same person. Yeah. Adam Green. He directed Frozen. Okay. Not not yeah. the animated one, the horror one. Understand. I believe that's the movie about people who are stuck in a ski lift in the middle of a blizzard. Oh, I remember seeing trailers for that shit. Uh, he also wrote the Tommy Jarvis tapes for Friday the 13th, the game. Oh, okay. That's actually really cool. And uh, he he goes on to do the rest of the, the Hatchet franchise because there's two more movies after this. I know. To be honest, I'm going to make Bob kind of sad here. We could have watched these movies back to back to back. That's probably the best way to watch them. Oh, really? Yeah. Fuck, man. But. We have other shit we, we gotta do. We have other shit we gotta do. So maybe another day we'll watch them. That sucks. Uh, but Maybe I'll buy the Blu-rays if I like them enough. Maybe I can sit and watch all three together. They're fun to watch together. Budget, $1.5 Okay. All right. Box office, 208550 Oh, is this direct-to-video? I don't think so, but I think it was a smaller release. Okay. That makes sense, then. Because it was 2006, you know? Yeah, oh uh, yeah, I guess it wouldn't really... There was no streaming services in 06. Yeah. YouTube had just begun. Country of origin, United States. All right. Also known as Butcher la Legende de Victor Crowley. That's the French title. Okay. It's also the French-Canadian title. All right. Uh, and that just means Butcher, the Legend of Victor Crowley. It's kind of cool. All right, so there's two taglines okay. that appear on the cover art. All right. Uh, the first one, or the one that's like kind of as a, a post line to the title... Mm-hmm. Is old school American horror, so it's Hatchet old school. That's I like that. Uh, but like the real tagline is, "It's not a remake; 
It's not a sequel, and it's not based on a Japanese one. <laughs> I think it's so funny. That is really funny. Because <laughs> when, I mean, you... Oh, my God. Oh. So this is early 2000s. Yeah. So the vast majority of horror movies at this time were either remakes of classic horror movies. Sequels. Sequels, but, like... Not good ones. Well, I like, sequels to sequels to sequels, like, parts Ye- yeah, yeah. four or five or six. I mean, I assume this is when, like, we were getting, and like, then, The Bride of Chucky, The Seed of Chucky and shit. This like, was also when the J-Craze, like, remake happened. Mm-hmm. Like, when they were doing Ring and Grudge. Uh, grudge, yeah. Okay. So, pretty fun. I right. like when movies uh, tie themselves to the period in which they're made. You know what I mean? Because it, it makes them... It dates them, but it's cool. Yeah, exactly. It dates them, but I think it's always cool. All right, you raised it for some, some cool facts. Yes, Benjamin, I am ready for some cool facts. So, the story goes for how... Uh, the director came up with the background of Victor Crowley, Mm -hmm. is that in 1983, when he was eight years old... Oh, my God. He was at, like, a campfire, and a counselor told him, like, this really crappy story Mm -hmm. about Hatchet Face. (laughs) How he'd come and get him. You know, like, one of those classic, like, this is the summer camp, and this is, like... Yeah, like a classic... Something I made up on the spot. Campfire scary story. That's really funny. And that was at uh, Camp Avada. Like, Avada (laughs) Kedavra! But, um... (laughs) I can't. I can't. I almost just. Uh, you got me. I'm Harry Potter angry now. <laughs> I fucking hate Voldemort. The boy who lived come to die. <laughs> Voldemort's such a freak, bro. Uh, Jesus Christ. Ugh, all right. But apparently, like, when he went home after that campfire. Yeah. Not home, but back to the cabin after that campfire. He started thinking about Hatchet Face. And so he came up with a backstory for Hatchet Face that he then told to his camp cabin the next night to scare everyone. That's awesome. And the backstory he came up like with for Hatchet Face is basically just the backstory he ends up using for Victor Crowley in this film. That's really, really cool. Oh, man, that's really, oh, that's like, that's, I don't want to say sweet because it's kind of fucked up. Nah, it's pretty sweet. No, it's pretty sweet. Like, yeah, you're, you're an right. Like, you're an eight-year-old kid and you come up with this stupid idea and then you're like, you know what, let's make a movie. <laughs> What? <laughs> like 20 years later, you go, I made it into a movie. That's incredible. I flexed. Jesus Christ. That's awesome. <laughs> so kind of the thing, what you were trying to say earlier, and I kept cutting you off, is that this film is essentially a modern take on low-budget horror of the 80s. Yeah. Which means that it is essentially a low-budget horror for fans of low-budget horror. So... There's a lot of things this film does that are stylistically intended to be reminiscent of, I don't want to say bad movies from like the 70s and 80s, but classic. crappy movies <laughs> from the 70s and 80s. I was going to say classic genre tropes. Yeah, but the ones that aren't necessarily like, things that don't necessarily make good movies, Yeah, but people like me have seen enough and are just like, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Uh, and then I guess my final thing is fun fact. Okay. The hatchet featured in the movie is technically not a hatchet because it has two blades instead of one and a hammer. <laughs> Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you for that. Jesus Bob Christ. Bob finds that very funny because sometimes I'll point out in movies if it's a hatchet or not. <laughs> what movie did that fucking start with? What was that? Splinter? <laughs> I, I don't know. I think I've mentioned it outside the podcast, too. You have. Oh, God. Yeah, because we were. Oh, my God. I You pissed me off that one day. What? You, I, someone had a something that I was like, oh, that's bas- that's like a little hatchet. And you're like, no, that's a tomahawk. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> Particular. Uh, yeah, he, Ben knows how to push my buttons. Oh, that was going to be my last fact. Let me do a disclaimer before we watch the movie. All right. For anyone who's, like, concerned, this is not based on the book Hatchet. Oh, oh wait, what's just, the book Hatchet? Just so we know. Is there a book called Hatchet? Yeah. Did you I, ever read it? No, I didn't actually. I don't know what you're it's talking by, about. By uh, Gary Paulson. Why would anyone be concerned? Well, I don't know. Okay. Just it's a, it's a survival book about a young adult kid. Okay. It's actually very good. I loved okay. it as a kid. I don't know. I was just like, don't worry, guys. It's not an adaptation of this classic, like, award-winning book. Book. Okay. Just so people aren't confused. I just bring it up because I was looking at IMDb, and they have a question and answer section, and someone asked... <laughs> That's that's very funny. All right, that's all I got for uh, pre-movie stuff. So, all right, that's it. I guess we're gonna go watch Hatchet. We'll see you all in a little bit. Boy.
Hi, we're back from the movie. How'd you like it, Bob? What do you think? It's good. No, I liked it. No well, spoilers. Uh, I don't want... Uh, <laughs> I laughed a lot more than I thought I would, actually. Yeah? I thought it was very funny. Bob laughed a lot. I, I don't think he was scared. I think the most insane reaction we got was... Oh, oh, oh. And a lot of... <laughs> this, that movie's not scary, man. Well, if if you still aren't used to gore, maybe, but... Yeah, I mean, like, if gore upsets you, sure, that makes it scary. It's got a lot of practical gore effects, and they're delicious. They're fucking immaculate. I, I assume I didn't catch any of the actors that you thought I would. No. Uh, do you want to do that now? Sure. Do you have anything to say before we go to the spoiler section? No. Well, actually, yeah, here. Here's what I have to say. If you have not seen this movie, and you like slasher movies, you have to watch this. But, like... It's immaculate. Keep in mind... Not a very good movie. No, 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 no. But if you like slashers, you're going to fucking love but they, this movie. They know it's not a good movie, and they do it on purpose. And it's incredibly funny. All right. It reminds me of, like, um, of a spoofy movie. It reminds me of, like, an early 2000s spoof movie. But just more serious. But more serious, and it, it's incredible. Like, it's not a spoof, but it, it plays around There are some genre moments where shows. I'm just like, oh, my God. Yeah. It's very it's very good. Well, all right. That, so, that was it. Actors? Yes. Did you catch anyone famous in there? I don't. I don't think so. No, no. You read the credits. Yeah, I saw Robert England. Was <laughs> yeah, did you not see Robert England? I didn't see him. All right, you saw the name Kane Hodder. That sounded familiar. Yes. Who is he? You make me sad that you don't know that. Really? Yes. Okay. Oh, first of all, okay. I told you he plays Victor Crowley. Yes. He also plays another character. Did you see him? I, I assume not, because I don't think you. Know no, him. actually. He also plays Mr. Crowley. Which is why during the movie, I say, wow, look, Victor Crowley has a nice Hulk Hogan mustache. Oh, my God. They're the same person. That makes more by the sense. the same person. Okay. He's, he's a stunt actor. Okay. He's a very, 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 the very, 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 sounds very really famous familiar. One. Like, honestly. The, the reason most people know him is because he played Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th, part 7 through 10. Oh shit! That's why he's familiar. So from 1982 to 2002. Oh, he's playing. he's in Jason X then. Yeah, he, that's the last one he did. That's pretty rad. Um, yeah, he's probably he's my favorite Jason. Okay, that man's a dude maniac. I will say the acting in this movie is not good because it's kind of on purpose. You know, they play their characters well. The acting for actually like for Victor Crowley, incredible. Well, I mean, the character's supposed to be kind of a spoof of it's slashers, but, but very specifically Jason Voorhees. But it's incredible. This is a Jason Voorhees actor. Yeah, it's so good. Um, Everything he does is really awesome. Kind of a fun thing to talk about. He does a fire stunt in this movie. Yeah. Super interesting because uh, Kane Hodder, this used to be the case. I know when they filmed it, and I think it is still the case now, but he has the longest on-film fire stunt of Oh, all shit, time. really? There's longer fire stunts, but like in a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, That's 44 cool. 44 seconds. Man was on fire for 44 seconds? Yeah, uh, it's in one of his... Friday the 13th movies. Holy shit. Which, very surprising, because prior to doing that stunt, he actually got burned really bad in really? a fire stunt. Uh, yeah, he has severe, like, third-degree burn scars all over his body. Holy shit. Just, like, permanent that he got when he was much younger. That's wild. Super cool dude. He does a lot of uh, stunt directing nowadays, but... That's really cool. I mean, yeah, he's probably older now. All right. Robert England, who is? Well, that's Freddy Krueger. Yeah. You didn't see him. No, I didn't. I am disappointed in you, Bob. Why? You really didn't see him. No. Should I have? Yes. I know what he looks like. Do you? Yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> what do you mean? I I want to tell you, but if you really think you know what he looks like, you should be able to figure out who it was. <laughs> I'm trying, man. Do you want me to tell you? Yeah. You're going to be really bad at yourself. Am I? Yeah. Okay. Paw. <laughs> Oh, fuck! God damn it, you're right! I'm fucking stupid! Why did I put that together? He's the dad in the cold opening. Oh my god. I feel like a fucking idiot now. Now that you say that, I... Perfect. <laughs> That's... That... God the damn it. The same one who keeps, like, insulting, like... Oh my god. Insulting Ainsley? Ainsley? Yeah. Which, by the way, Ainsley, I think, has the best line in this film. <laughs> Are you talking about his dad? He's like, You're such a fuck-up, Ainsley! <laughs> Stop being a queer, Ainsley. Why aren't you like your, your sister, sister, Ainsley? <laughs> I just find the fact that his dad insults him and calls him a queer and then says, "You, why aren't you like your sister, to be very funny. Yeah. But yeah, the the dad's for Robert, Robert England. England. That makes The guy I've... who you looked at and went, why is he smoking a pipe? And then they do the dramatic face 
<laughs> it's very funny. I can't believe I didn't catch that. Yeah. I'm especially I'm like because right mad. after that scene, the opening credits come up and it says Robert, Robert England. England and you went, Oh, Robert England's in this movie. Yeah. That makes way more sense. Not to mention the first time we see that guy, you started laughing and I was like, Why are you laughing, Bob? <laughs> Well, because the first line is fucking hysterical. I know, but I thought you were laughing because they revealed Robert, Robert England's England. face. No. Are there any other famous people in this movie? There's one more. Okay. Is it the dude that I went, I should recognize this man, but I don't? Who? The the first shop that they go to. The the dude that answered the door. Yes. Okay. I don't know but who why, it is. Why did you say you should recognize this person? Because I- Is it just how the shop was framed? No, because I recognize him, but I don't know his name. Okay. So that character's Reverend Zombie. Yeah. Cool ass fucking name. Cool name. Tony Todd. Yeah, uh, Candyman. Yep. Yep. I knew I knew who it was. I Daniel knew Robitaille. I knew who it was. And I was like, I can fucking recognize this guy, but I can't remember who the fuck it is. That's Candyman, yeah. Yep. I knew I knew that one. I'm glad I at least got one. Now, uh, before we move on. Yeah. Fun fact this movie features Jason Voorhees killing Freddy Krueger. <laughs> does it really? Oh, yeah, I guess it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, did I miss something? No, you're just, it's a bit. So okay. if you don't want to watch Freddy vs. Jason. You can watch this. I actually like Freddy vs. Jason. I've seen it. It's good. You have bad taste. It's okay. I mean, no, I, it's, it's good. I liked it's it. It's not that good. I saw it when I was 14. Calm That's down. why you thought it was good. Exactly. There it is. Also, you haven't seen the other ones. It's not high up on that list of really? goodness. Really? I remember liking it a lot. Okay, so uh, we kind of got some post-movie discussion points, but first, I guess we're going to summarize this. It's not a lot to summarize. Basically, Ben and his friend Marcus, like, they're down in Louisiana. Yep. They're partying hard because it's Mardi well, Gras. They're... Marcus is partying hard. But uh, all of Ben's friends are having a good time except Ben, who just went up through, like, a breakup. Yeah. And is being, well, He's a me. He's being a Debbie Downer about He's it. He's being a me about it. And <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Damn. A Debbie Downer. Yeah. But he's like, I don't want to go look at boobs anymore. I want to go do a haunted swamp tour. <laughs> and everyone else is like, we don't want to do that. We want to go look at boobs. <laughs> look at boobs and throw up. Because oh, one guy has apparently, he threw up six times the previous day. Which is nuts. I've never thrown up from drinking once. Oh, fair enough. I'm just saying. If you start throwing up from drinking, you probably won't remember it. So <laughs> It's fair. But he, Ben leaves, and he's like, you guys don't have to come with me. He leaves, and Marcus, who's probably his closest friend in that yeah. group, decides to be a good friend, which was a bad decision. A horrible decision. And goes with him. And basically, they start looking around for a swamp tour. They run into Reverend Zombie first, who's like, I don't do swamp tours anymore. It's so funny. Because of the liability. Really? It, this movie does such a good job of faking you out with tropes you think you're going to get. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's awesome. But then they go to this other guy. This might be my favorite character in the entire movie. Oh, Sean? Sean is yeah. fucking hysterical. Oh, it's so good. We really need to watch the other ones of these. <laughs> They're so fun. It's it's just... it's. Number one description of this movie, fun. It's just fun, man. I, I, I'm so glad we watched it. But Sean is this Asian guy. He's got like a top hat and a cape. Yeah. And I swear to God, that's relevant. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other characters are Doug Shapiro. Doug Shapiro. Misty and Jenna. Misty and Jenna. Yeah. And then Mary Beth. Yep. Oh, and then and uh, Jim. Jim. I don't remember his wife's name. Jen? Was it Jim and Jen? No, because I think that one girl's was Jenna. Oh, yeah, that pretty be close. I can't remember her name. Let's see. It was Jim. Yep. And Shannon. Shannon, that's what it was. They're the Permatillo. The family. Permatillo. Those two were also very funny. <laughs> Most of the characters in this are pretty funny. I, it's, it's not a comedy movie, but it is fucking hysterical. It's mostly because they're, uh, some of them are just bad actors, and some of them are acting poorly on purpose. And it's absurd, and it's awesome. But they all hop on this bus, and they go drive down to, like, the bayou. Yep. And they hop on this boat. And as they're hopping on this boat, this crazy man who drinks <laughs> his own pee starts screaming at him. And Tell Sean's him the like, closed. just ignore him. That's Jack Cracker. <laughs> he drinks his own piss. <laughs> he does drink his own piss. He does drink his own piss, his own piss. yeah. Uh, relevant. But, you know, he's telling them, don't go in the swamp. It's closed. You'll all die. Yep. And they're not listening. So they go into the swamp anyways. On the boat. And uh, it's a real, real shitty haunted <laughs> swamp tour. It's really bad. Like, Sean doesn't know any of the actual facts. He's reading off shitty note cards, like, barely driving the boat correctly. It's yeah, bad. But eventually, surprise, surprise, he crashes the boat into some rocks and a, probably a tree, too. There's oh, a yeah. tree right there. It's stuck to the tree. And basically, the boat starts flooding. Yep. And it starts raining. So everyone's like, we got to get off this fucking boat. It's sinking. 
Well, they're, they're kind of like, I don't know what to do. And Jim is like, no, nah, I see that tree. I can climb it. <laughs> Not a bad Starts Jim climbing impression. on the tree. He's like, oh, it's slippery. You better hold on. <laughs> Immediately falls. I think lands on his nuts. <laughs> and then, the and gator. then a gator bites his leg. <laughs> oh, God. And so, you know, they all eventually get off the boat. Jim's injured. Jim's injured. And they start like hike into this to wherever trying to find some trying to find a road or people so they can get some help for yeah. Jim because Jim um, is injured once they get far enough from the shore they all turn on Mary Beth because Jim was able to get free from the gator because yeah. Mary Beth shot it and they're like why, why the do fuck you, do you have a gun why do you have a which, gun which let's be honest it's Louisiana it's Louisiana the deep south in 2006 in 2006 if she didn't and have a gun only one of them has a gun yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's shocking that only one of them has a gun. Honestly, it's not shocking because the rest of them are Taurus. Still! <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. <coughs> Those college kids, I don't know, they might be from LSU or something. I don't know, actually, yeah, maybe. But, like, more than one of them would have had a gun. Yeah, probably. That's the South. <laughs> or at the very least, they shouldn't be surprised about it. That was the thing. I was surprised that they were surprised. I was like, oh, they she's got They seemed angry, gun. and I was like, it's a tiny gun. It's just a handgun. Like I, yeah, was it a revolver? No, it was just it was a normal handgun. Okay, normal. I think you mean a huh? Mm. Anyways, she starts talking about uh, she had a gun because she came out here looking for someone, specifically Victor Crowley. Yep. So her her dad and brother. Yep. Who we get to see murdered in the opening. Yeah, that's Robert the Robert England and Ainsley, who is played by Josh from um, the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> yes, that's Ainsley. They get murdered. She doesn't know what happened to them. They disappeared two days ago with her boat. Yep. And so she's gone out to look for them in this part of the swamp that's closed for years because of Victor Crowley. Yep. Allegedly. And she just decided to go on this haunt, like this haunted swamp tour because it was cheaper to then pay $30 for a ticket. She explains the story of Victor Crowley. Super cool. It's in a flashback. It is really cool. You get to see young Victor Crowley. Yeah. That's a woman, by the way. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. And that adult Victor Crowley, whatever. Yeah. And Kane Hodder, too. So, yeah. But <laughs> she explains the story, and everyone's kind of uh, freaked out, but they're like, that's not real. Besides, we passed the the house of Victor Crowley two miles back. Yeah. <laughs> she's just like, no, that's the house. <laughs> and points to, like, where the camera is. It's And there's this old decrepit so house cheesy. they somehow didn't see. I think it's very funny. And then what follows is basically everyone just getting picked off one by one. Just getting annihilated by Victor Crowley. Cool ways. Oh, very cool. The, there's two things I want to mention here. Yeah. A, Doug Shapiro Nearly dies. Nearly headless Doug. Yeah, he gets his head... Most of the way ripped off. That I was saying that's the coolest decapitation we've seen. But I want to mention that he's nearly headless Sam. Yes. Because it's discovered that... So the whole time he's brought these two girls along. Misty and Jenna. And he's shooting like a softcore porn for uh, Bayou Beavers. Yeah. Oh God. Except Bayou Beavers isn't real. He lied. He made it up. He created this fake persona to shoot softcore porn. I guess for a personal collection. Oh, it's for, yeah, it's for personal use. So weird. Very weird. Made me very uncomfortable. Not the entrapment part. The fact that he's going to these lengths. Yeah. For softcore porn. Not even, nothing. It's, well, it's just the fact that. Look, I get it. It was 2006. The internet wasn't around, man. But that's a lot of effort. The internet was around, Bob. Well, yeah, but like not in the way we see. You know what I mean? Enough to get porn, though. Yeah, but on shitty dial-up, you have to wait 15 minutes for an image. Not on shitty dial-up. It wasn't fast, but we were not, weren't on dial-up anymore. It's 2006. But in, in Louisiana, in the yeah. swamp, not a, the, all of Louisiana is in a swamp. There's parts that are less swampy. <laughs> it's not like your ass crack. Oh come on. Yeah. Brought it round. I don't know. It's just like w a weird length to go to. It is. It, no, it's a lot of effort for not very good porn. Especially because the guy is, I don't think, from Louisiana. No, he's not. <laughs> he's not at all. So he flies out there, sets up this fake persona, I guess on his weekends. I guess. It's just weird. It is weird. So yeah, he's nearly had the Sam. Very, very. I mean, listen, this movie's a cheesy mess, but the practicals look Oh, they're so good. Awesome. I will say, they apparently don't look as good in HD, so. Yeah, we watched it in SD. It helps. It gives it that old, cheap 80s feel. Yeah, it does. That's the one thing I wanted to mention. The other one, though, remember how I said it was relevant that the Asian man was <laughs> wearing the top hat and the cape? Yeah. Basically, as he, as the film goes on, he becomes more and more disheveled, right, as things yeah, keep yeah, going yeah. wrong, because he's the tour guide. And he loses the hat on the boat. He loses the hat on the boat, and then he eventually loses the cape And then he later. loses his shirt, or like the... No, it's the cape. Is it just the cape? Yeah. And the losing the the cape and the hat are kind of the show like these levels of disheveled he gets. 
I point them out because as he gets more disheveled, his accent changes. Yeah. So, so at on first, the boat, he's doing kind of this dramatic, like over the top, like orator voice. Yeah. And then right about the time the boat crashes and things start going wrong and he loses the top hat, he switches to the most stereotypical Asian accent ever. Yeah. And, and starts, starts swearing speak- in. I'm gonna put quotation marks here. Foreign languages. It, it doesn't. It doesn't tell you what he says. It just says speaking gibberish in a foreign language. Because in the subtitles. The next time he loses it, he switches to just a normal like American accent. I, it's like mid Eastern. Like, yeah, just like a normal normal dude. And it's so funny because everyone gets so fucking mad, so mad yeah. that Marcus punches him in the face. Because <laughs> then he goes, "It was an accent. I was I was freaking out, man." So fucking stupid. I think I know why he does that. I don't. So like his first voice, right, is his his like accent for like the yeah. tours and stuff. The Asian accent, though, I think he puts on. I don't want to sound bad when I say this. I think he puts it on because he he's figured out that if he does that, people like excuse his actions and will go, "Oh, he's like a stupid foreign guy." That's you know what in Louisiana in two thousand six, yeah, and like that people would, yeah, that makes sense completely actually. He'd only and the they thing hold is, him less like culpable for his actions. Yeah, the thing is, he'd only done one tour in the swamp before this, and it was the night before. Yeah, that's also he was like, I did one tour yesterday, nothing went wrong. And then fucking Marcus is like, this isn't part of the tour, is it? And he goes, you think I crashed the boat every night for fun? Keep in mind, he's doing both those lines in a really bad Asian accent. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I, like, it's it's very funny, the first it's, reveal. And then the second the one. The second one really fucking got me. Um, Because I don't know if you can tell, he was kind of doing the first accent on the boat some, but he would yeah. get pissed off. Mm-hmm. But I just thought the switch up was kind of fun. It, it's good. Uh, but yeah, people get picked off one by one, and eventually it gets down to... Uh, Two characters. Yep. Uh, I'm going to not say who they are. Sure. We can leave it up to interpretation. I mean, I think part of the fun of this movie is watching people get annihilated by Victor. Yeah, I'm not going to say how, except for Sam. Because, because that nearly was, had the Sam. Because that was a... I mean... I just think the joke of nearly had the Sam is funny. It was. And also, we need to mention it if we want to use it as an episode title. True. That's fair. I mean, I was going to clip it out probably anyway. Fair. That or... <laughs> you look like you were molested by wolves. Oh, God. Dude, Marcus keeps doing these insults to Victor, and every time he does them, he gets really cocky, and then he says it, and he hunkers down and starts looking like <laughs> starts wide-eyed. Looking like he's scared. It's scared. so fucking funny. Oh, God. There's a lot of comedy in threes in this movie. Like, they'll do something three times, and then they stop. Yep. Which is great, because it gets funnier, and then they're like, we gotta stop or it won't be funny anymore. It is so good. But eventually two people are left, and basically ends on a cliffhanger. Yeah. Like, it just ends in the middle of Victor murdering someone. Yeah. Like, he's just literally screaming at them, and then it just hard cuts to the credits. Yeah. It's awesome. Like, that's the perfect way for this kind of movie to end, in my opinion. Because it means, it leaves room for the next ones, which I know you said there are three, right? Two more. Two more after this one. Immaculate. Because if they kill Victor, then there's no two more movies, or they have to explain Although, it away. I gotta point out, Victor Victor is immortal. Oh, yeah. I mean, he gets shot. He's an immortal ghost. <laughs> He's an immortal ghost that has a physical body. Which, uh, let, that's the whole summary of the movie, so we're going to talk about something else now. You, you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. He's an immortal ghost that uh, has a physical body, can be hurt, but just keeps getting back up. Sometimes he teleports. Sometimes he teleports. <laughs> I hope you realize that that's a reference to just slashers. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. like... You haven't seen a lot, but the common trope is that, you know, originally in, like, the early movies, they're just normal people. Yeah. And then as time goes on, they keep taking more and more damage, and it's like, you shouldn't survive that. You just got, like, an axe to the forehead or whatever. I uh, shot him six times! Yeah. They're, they make that joke in the movie. Mm-hmm. I know. But a lot of the references, this character is very much uh, based on Jason Voorhees. Yeah. And so, like, eventually Jason just fucking dies. Spoilers. But just comes back. Nice. God, a I couple would. times. So that's kind of like the immortal kind of. Also, the teleporting. That's a, so funny. That's a Michael Myers joke. It is. Because Michael Myers teleports everywhere. Oh, I know. I mean, fuck, even in Halloween 2, he's in the hospital and then he's outside. Even in the first Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> Where, how'd he get there? Mm-hmm. He'll be in like one spot and then Laurie Strode will turn around and look back at him three seconds later and he's gone. I like the way they did it in this movie, though, where he just, like... he's He disappeared, and then it'll pop up behind someone. Yeah, it's awesome, because they'll be like, where is he? And then he'll just appear out of nowhere and, and just the, annihilate somebody. They do these very funny camera tricks, where it's... Something's just off screen, and we're only like... That's the way the camera's filming from, and it's like a static <laughs> shot. And the characters are arguing in something, and then they'll turn and be like, it's right there! It's so <laughs> it's funny. It's very funny, because it's, it's purposely making fun of that bad style of, like, cinematography. Yeah, it's... 
Chef's kiss. Right. I, I'm like so glad we watched this movie. It's so fucking stupid and so fun. I it's literally looked at Ben and said this is the dumbest movie I've ever seen, but it's incredible. So here's something to talk about before we move off of kind of Victor Crowley. Sure. So he's played by Kane Hodder, who also played Jason. I think something that's important to note is how distinctly different those two characters are. Uh, yeah, I haven't really seen a lot of Jason. You movie. haven't really seen a Jason movie. I think your basis is part or the remake and then Freddy versus Jason. The remake, which you... Don't really remember. Don't really remember. And Freddy versus Jason. I think what's important to note is Freddy... Jason is very, like, imposing. Mm-hmm. Victor Crowley is just a frantic menace. He's a fucking maniac. It's he, incredible. He, he's basically a combination of Jason with the red redneck mutant inbred cannibal uh, trope Leatherface. that was going around at this time. No. Oh. No, that's just Leatherface. He okay. is a part of it. But there was basically a trend of redneck inbred mutant cannibals I in the see. early 2000s. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, isn't that what, like, what the hills have eyes? No, but that's older. Okay. There's been a couple redneck inbred cannibal movies, but okay. there was, like, a trend of them. Like, Interesting. A big trend. Like, wrong turn and stuff like that around the early 2000s. That makes sense. But, yeah, he's just a frantic menace. It's really good. And I think that's kind of interesting to note because it shows that Kane Hodder, well, he can play, like, two slasher villains. He can play them very differently because he can play, like, imposing, silent, just, like, mountain of muscle. Mm-hmm. And then he could also play wild hillbilly who's, like, jittery and shit. Throwing axes and shit. It's awesome. But missing. It's just, I think it's important to note, like, his... The range, you know? His range. Especially for something you wouldn't think has that range. Yeah, I mean, and I think I really kind of got that when we, after we watched My Bloody Valentine, because I think that's one of the only other slashers we've really watched. Yeah. The difference between Michael and Harry is very, di- they're very different, you know? They're similar in the fact that they're big and imposing, but their style of murder is different. The way that they, yeah. the way that they interact with their, their victims is very different, mm-hmm. you know? And I find that this is very different as well, and I like all three of them, actually. Yeah. I just think it's something interesting to note, uh, both because, you know, slashers can be very different, especially even when they're, like, built similar. Yeah. But also just, like, when they're played by the same actor. Yeah. All right. Favorite character. This is really hard. Sean's super funny. Sean Sean's, is incredibly Sean's funny. Sean's my favorite. Can... <sighs> I also like Ben, but that's for separate reasons. I don't... It's because it's me. Yeah. Can I choose Victor? No. Fuck. You're not allowed to choose the slasher. Because He's so you'll good. always choose the slasher in a slasher film. It's implied that your favorite should be the slasher. He is. He's awesome. Killer. Like, an actual character, though. Yeah, I think Sean. Sean he's funny. Sean? I think his uh, reactions to a lot of the messes they get themselves in is immaculate. So, yeah, right. I think it's Sean. Favorite death or gore effect? Now, I don't want you to tell me a character name. Well, it's the belt sander. Belt sander? Yes. Okay. That we're, was, just, we're just going to leave it at that. Don't it, explain. It, chef's kiss. Got me, got me good. I'll awesome. just say, we don't necessarily get to see it when it happens, but we get to see the after effects. That's the best part. It's so cool. Because, I mean, even during the movie, I think you clipped it. I was literally yelling, oh, you're not going to show me? And then it showed me, and I was like, yeah. It's so cool. All right. The last like kind of question I have, because there's not really a lot to talk about with slasher movies. No, this one, Especially, I... like, late series kind of generic slasher movies. Yeah. Like, even if this one's very funny, it's more of a, go enjoy it. You, you, this is a good, enjoyable movie. What do you think about, like, the style, you know, like, the campiness? Did you like it? Do you think it was a good homage to that style? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I love it. I'm I'm, I'm a real big a real big fan. I think it's super fun. Now, like, you know what it was doing, and yeah. you appreciated it. Mm-hmm. Do you think it was a bad movie, though? Because, like, it's doing that stuff on purpose, which I can appreciate. I think if you don't know going into it, you would think it's a bad movie. Because, like, objectively, it's, it's kind of a bad movie. Objectively, it is a bad movie. <laughs> There's not good acting. The sets are not the greatest. No. The best actor in the film is Kane. <laughs> Kane Otter. He, he does an amazing job as Richard Crowley. He's a maniac. He doesn't even have any lines. He just screams. It's awesome. I just, I'm just wondering about that. I think if you go in knowing what you're in for, it's fantastic. If you go in not knowing, I think you probably won't have, you won't have a bad time, but you will not have an, as good of a time as I had. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think you definitely have to like campy movies. Because oh, can you imagine I mean, watching you know, this if you didn't like cheesy, like, I would have hated movies? It. Ashley would fucking hate this shit, I think. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I I don't know. I think that the campiness is, it was a fun decision. I appreciated yeah, it. I did. It made the film more enjoyable for me. I will say, though, that it's, can you definitely see why it's like a horror movie made for fans of horror yeah, movies? Yeah, if you don't. If I mean, you, yeah. hell, the cameos are just, let's watch this slasher kill that slasher. Yeah. The only problem with doing something like that is, obviously, we enjoyed it. And I'm sure it, it's a cult classic. That's why I got two more movies, even though it did atrociously at the box office. Oh, yeah. 
but it's objectively not a good movie. No, objectively not a good movie. But if you are a fan of horror, I, if you haven't seen this, I, what are you doing? Go watch this. It's so fun. It's so, so fun. So fun. Which I guess is a good way to go into our recommendations. Yeah. Bob? Fan of horror, fan of slashers. Go watch it. It's it's funny. It's cool. If you're a fan of practicals, also go watch it. They look really fucking gnarly. Uh, Let's see. If you're a fan of, like, kind of, kind of dumb, sc- like, the original scary movie or something, you know, it's kind of spoofy, dumb, funny movies, it's pretty funny. Fair enough. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh, my recommendation is pretty similar. Uh, if you like slashers, go check it out. And I, when I say if you like slashers, I mean you like like slashers. Like you've seen all the Friday the 13th, all the uh, Halloween stuff like that. Not just the early ones that are really good. Like you like even the bad ones. If you like kind of low budget, kind of crappy horror movies, you should probably like those. Because it has a lot of bad things in it that are done purposely to seem like a really low budget slasher movie. Yeah. So you have to be able to be in on the joke, essentially, to find that very funny. Like, if you're not super familiar with that trend, I can very much see how you'd be like, this is just real bad. Yeah, that's completely fair. And then, uh, I guess the last one, practical effects, you know? If you want to check out some really, really, really good practical effects, check them out here. They don't always look the greatest. I guess what I should say is they look really, really good in SD. Yeah. However, it's all practical effects, and they also look kind of cheap at times. And, like, the way they shoot them is supposed to be reminiscent of, like I said, crappy 80s movies. Mm-hmm. Like, in some scenes, they'll just throw blood on a tree, and I think they reuse the same they clip the a same couple shot. times. Yep. It's very I laugh funny. every time. But, like, while well, the practical effects are really well done and really gory, they're also, like, purposely kind of cheap yeah. in a fun way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, keep that in mind. Again, it's... I don't think it's a funny movie because it's purposely supposed to be funny, but it's a funny and awesome movie if you are able to look at it and appreciate what it's trying to do, which is being bad. It It's very good at that. And being bad and cheesy and just cool. Yeah. It's it's basically a late entry slasher movie into one of the big franchises. It's like Jason X where it's like, you're not supposed to take this seriously. You're supposed to just watch some people get killed and have a good time. Yep. And that's exactly what I did. And I cannot complain. All right. Here's going to be probably the hardest part of this podcast. Yep. Rating. Now, so, I know you're going to just rate it on, like, how you feel, but... No, no, no. I've already decided what it is. Okay. You're going to you're gonna understand when I get to it. Uh-huh. I'm going to give this movie a three, because while I absolutely fucking love... I'm going to buy the Blu-ray for this, by the way. Um, I, I absolutely fucking love this movie. I think it's fantastic. I had a blast. The barrier for entry is very... The barrier for entry is super high, I think. In terms of getting all of the jokes. Like peak enjoyment? Yes. But I think... And I, I think it's important we point out that he says barrier for entry. It's not just like, oh, you have to see X, Y, and Z movies. Like, you have to be able to appreciate this style, too. Exactly. So I think while I enjoyed it a lot, if you go into this not knowing what you're going to into and you're just like, oh, I just want to watch a scary movie, you're going to have a bad time, I think. But it's not. it won't be the worst movie you've ever seen. But it... Because there are things about this that are good. Like, yeah. genuinely... Like, I think Kane Hodges' performance as Victor Crowley is awesome. I think the practicals look incredible. The writing is, well, it's really bad. And that's on purpose. And but I understand it's that. It's good writing. It's good writing <laughs> but if it's you bad. know. it's bad. So I think I have to leave it at a three because two and a half would be completely in the middle. But I think it goes above and beyond that by having good practicals and having a good performance from Kane. And also, I think Victor Crowley's backstory is kind of a little interesting. Yeah. And is kind of cool. Okay. So that's where I sit with it, you know? Fair enough. I'm also in a similar boat of this is hard to rate because I'm in the target audience group, and I think this film is very, very, very fun. Yep. For me, like, as the target audience group, it might be like a four, you know? Yeah, that's what I want to I want to give it a I four. I want to give it a four because, you know, it, it basically plays this spoof slasher super duper well. It's so good. But at the same time, it's a bad movie. It's a bad like if, movie. If I was not in the target audience group and I... If I'm to, like, remove myself from the idea of this movie being, like, what it is, it's like a, a low-budget slasher for, for fans of low-budget slashers, I might rate it a one and a half. <laughs> I don't want to say a one, because it isn't, like, the worst thing ever. No. But it gets real bad. There's some. There were some moments where I was literally laughing so hard the because it was so bad. The practical effects get it to maybe a two. Yeah. But probably a one and a half, if I'm being honest. Everything else, not good. <laughs> it's great. But it's not good. And so I find myself, I have to give it something in the middle, you know? Yeah, it's fair. And, you know, my my normal score is looking at something and going, does it do what it sets out to do? This movie does everything it set out, this sets out to do. This movie does do everything it set out to do. But I think it kind of goes above and beyond doing what it's 
supposed to do. I do like too. they include some mega actors in this. I mean, Tony Todd, Robert England, yeah, Kane Hodder, uh, just really, really big names in the horror industry, and the practical effects are really good. I'm gonna give it a three and a half. I because I want to give it a four. I don't feel like I can go lower than three and a half. That's completely fair. But I'm gonna take half half a ranking off from the four, just because I think Bob is right. Even though this is made for like a very specific target audience, and if you're in that target audience, this film is amazing. That target audience is very specific. Oh yeah. And you know, if you don't like kind of cheesy bad movies, if you don't like you know uh, slasher movies, and have seen enough to really get a feel for the bad ones this movie is really 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 bad oh yeah it's and i think no matter like the good things i say about it if not everyone is able to enjoy it yeah i can't you can't give it like i can't go higher if you had given this a five i would have been mad well it's not perfect because you can't give it a five because i think but it could be a four maybe even a four and a half it could but for sure maybe two and three will be i don't know We'll find out. I mean, it's just there's some things they have to do because of the theme they're going for, mm-hmm. and it 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 lo- <sighs> you know it's it's great, but it also makes a bad movie just objectively. Yeah. So I'm just gonna go with the three and a half. I think that's a I think that's completely a, fair. A fairly fair one. Take I do off too. like a star or a star and a half, whatever. But I don't know. That's all I got. <laughs> go check it out. Yeah. If if you think you're in that target audience and you haven't seen this movie. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Go put it on with some friends or something. I was something. about to say, this is a fantastic movie to put on with friends and just sit back and enjoy. Like, top tier. Crisp. <laughs> but I guess we're going to go to the outtakes now. Yeah, I guess we're going to head to the outtakes, everybody. See you in a minute. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the outtake section for this episode of Beware the Board. I hope you're enjoying our review of Hatchet so far. I fucking love this movie. I think it's so, so, so fun. Without further ado, let's get into the first outtake. This first one is our, well, my reaction to The Cold Open, where Victor Crowley absolutely annihilates Ainsley. (laughs) Oh my god! Holy shit! That was awesome. Yup. This next clip is our reaction to the first time that Sean finally breaks his character and starts yelling in what the Sibes titles call a foreign language. (laughs) 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 He just started yelling in... (laughs) (laughs) What the fuck? I was not expecting that. That was really fucking funny. This next clip is my reaction to a small jump scare, as it's the first time we see what Victor Crowley actually looks like as he's stalking through the swamp. Oh, hey, you are. Hey, you are. I saw him. This next clip is our reaction to Jim attempting to leave the boat as it's sinking and getting attacked by a gator. Away Jim goes. Bye, Jim. See you later, Jimmy. I like Jim. I do, too. I think they're both very funny. Oh, rest in peace, Jimmy's got a gator on his leg. Oh, no, Jim. (laughs) No. He's good. Someone's. Oh, she had a gun! This next clip is my reaction to seeing a full body shot of Victor Crowley for the first time, as well as watching Jim and Shannon get absolutely fucking annihilated. Oh, shit! Yo, he looks awesome! Oh, my God! Oh! No, Jim! Jim! Oh my god! (laughs) Is she really gonna try and shoot him? Why is she standing there watching? Get her! This next clip is our reaction to watching Doug Shapiro get his head twisted almost completely off, and us giving him the name Nearly Headless Doug. 
Oh. Oh. No. Oh, my God. That's the coolest decapitation we've seen. Well, technically, it was only a partial decapitation. He's nearly headless, Shapiro. <laughs> his full name, nearly headless. Like that guy from Harry Potter, nearly yeah, headless Nick. Nearly headless Nick. It's nearly headless Doug. Shapiro. Doug. That was the coolest one. This next clip is our reaction to finding out what Sean's normal accent actually is. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, he deserved that. He deserved to get punched in the face for that. Can he be racist? Because he was definitely being racist. <laughs> this next clip is our reaction to a couple of people dying. Let's just say it involves a belt sander and a shovel. Oh, he's got a fucking... Is that... Oh, it's a fucking belt sander? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, come on, show it. Come on. Oh, holy shit. Oh. Oh, I mean, she's dead as fuck. If they try and save her, she's... No, nah, maybe she's okay. No, nah, there's no way she's okay. What is he doing? Oh, he's going for the shovel like a moron. Oh, oh, come on. He took his foot clean off. It's just a flesh wound. This next clip is uh, my reaction to one of the very few jump scares in this movie. <gasps> oh, shit! That scared the shit out of me. I didn't expect it to be right there. Oh! He has got stabbed. Come on! Mar Marcus just fucking tossed a flashlight. It was about to die anyways. Also, it's fairly bright. It's bright enough. This next clip is our reaction to the death of Marcus. Oh, shit! No! Marcus, no! How is he killing him? Oh, is he just... No way! Okay. Oh, ripped his arms off. Okay. A classic maneuver. That's why you don't be a good friend. Be bad friends, people. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the outtakes for this episode. I'm sure there were uh, quite a few. I, man, some of those kills, I just can't get over them. They were so oh. fucking cool. You know what you should have done for this outro? What's up? You should have started in like an orator voice, switched to a really racist Asian voice, and then ended in a normal voice. Benjamin, I'm white. Like a normal, like, Midwestern American voice. I'm a white man. I don't think that's, uh, that'd be very frowned upon. Let me put it that way. I know. Anyway, <laughs> do we have any announcements, Benjamin? No. I don't think so. No. So. We got an episode next Friday. An episode next Friday. Check it out. We'll see you when it comes out. Get there! <laughs> Other than that, follow us on Twitter, at Beware the Board. It's where I post everything for the show. Episodes go out, and I put out a link on the day they come out. On Mondays, I put out a spoiler for Friday's episode so that you can watch the movie beforehand if you want to. So you don't have anything spoiled when we talk about it. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, you know, go ding that bell, like, and subscribe, and, you know, real slash up our, our watch page. Get those numbers going. <laughs> Slash it with a hatchet. Slash it with a hatchet. If you have any recommendations for the random category on the board, leave them in the comments below. We need your recommendations so that we can build up a, p a plethora of options. Or if you just want to say how much of a better host I am than Bob, you can do that there too. Wow, dude, you are really come from my ass today. <laughs> God damn. If you have uh, recommendations for movies you think we should watch on the show, Leave those in the comments so Ben can look into them and see if they're worth our time. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But it's always good to look. Uh, we'll be places you get podcasts eventually, if not now. So, uh... Woo! We'll eventually be on all the podcast platforms. We aren't at the moment, but we will be. And when we are, you can check our Twitter to find out. If you can't tell, we're not right now as of recording. As so. of recording, we are not. But we will be at some point. I think that's all we have, Benjamin. So... I guess we'll see you next week, everybody. Well, see you Friday. Oh, God a damn days. it. I always forget when we record these holiday episodes. They don't come out on Fridays. Well, sometimes they do. Sometimes. All right. See you Friday. And remember, always beware the board.